things were clear to him. He was loyal, a believer in dignity, honor, and effort. He taught Sunday school. He paid cash, a fact noted in a directory published by the Giles Mercantile Agency and meant to be held in strictest confidence. The small red book fit into a vest pocket and listed nearly all Galveston's established citizens. Its police officers, bankers, waiters, clerics, tobacconists, undertakers, tycoons, and shipping agents, and rated them for credit worthiness, basing this appraisal on secret reports filed anonymously by friends and enemies. An asterisk beside a name meant trouble, inquire at office, and marred the fiscal reputations of such people as Joe Amondo, Tamale Vender, Noah Allen, attorney, Ida Cherry, widow, and August Rolfing, house painter. Isaac Klein got the highest rating, a B for pays well, worthy of credit. In November of 1893, two years after Isaac arrived in Galveston to open the Texas section of the new U.S. Weather Bureau, a government inspector wrote, I suppose there is not a man in the service on station duty who does more real work than he. He takes a remarkable degree of interest in his work and has a great pride in making his station one of the best and most important in the country, as it is now. Upon first meeting Isaac, men found him to be modest and self-effacing, but those who came to know him well saw a hardness and confidence that verged on conceit. A New Orleans photographer captured this aspect in a photograph that so good, with so much attention to the geometries of composition and light, it could be a portrait in oil. The background is black. Isaac's suit is black. His shirt is of the color of bleached bone. He has a mustache and goatee and wears a straw hat, not the rigid cake plate variety, but one with a sweeping scimitar brim that imparts to him the look of a French painter or riverboat gambler. A darkness suffuses the photograph. The brim shadows the top of his face. His eyes gleam from the darkness. Most striking is the careful positioning of his hands. His right rests in his lap, gripping what could be a pair of gloves. His left is positioned in midair so that the diamond on his pinky sparks with the intensity of a star. There's a secret embedded in this photograph. For now, however, suffice it to say the portrait suggests vanity, that Isaac was aware of himself and how he moved through the day and saw himself as something bigger than a mere recorder of rainfall and temperature. He was a scientist, not some farmer who gauged the weather by aches in a rheumatoid knee. Isaac personally had encountered and explained some of the strangest atmospheric phenomena a weatherman could ever hope to experience, but also had read the works of the most celebrated meteorologists and physical geographers of the 19th century, men like Henry Piddington, Matthew Fontaine Maury, William Redfield, and James Espy and he'd followed their celebrated hunt for the law of storms. He believed deeply that he understood it all. He lived in a big time, astride the changing centuries. The frontier was still a living, vivid thing, with Buffalo Bill Cody touring his Wild West show to sell out crowds around the globe, Bat Masterson, a sports writer in New Jersey, and Frank James opening the family ranch for tours at 50 cents a head. But a new America was emerging, one with big and global aspirations. Teddy Roosevelt, flanked by his Rough Riders, campaigned for the vice presidency. U.S. warships steamed to quell the boxers. There was fabulous talk of a great American-built canal that would link the Atlantic to the Pacific, a task at which Vicomte de Lesseps and the French had so catastrophically failed. The nation in 1900 was swollen with pride and technological confidence. It was a time, wrote Senator Chauncey Depew, one of the most prominent politicians of the age, when the average American felt 400% bigger than the year before. There was talk even of controlling the weather, of subduing hail with cannon blasts and igniting forest fires to bring rain. In this new age, nature itself seemed no great obstacle. Isaac's wife.